So now in this video, we come back to our NAND gate, integrated circuit SN74HC04N, and so it's the 7400 series integrated circuits. 04 lets us know it's the NAND gate. I think 08 is the NOR gate, but in any case, we haven't done any videos on the NOR gate yet. And so, in any case, there's four NAND gates in here. One, two, three, that's one of them. One, two, three, that's another one. That's the one we're going to focus on. We have the positive side of the power supply there, negative there, ground. So the next one starts, second pin down on the right, input, input, output, input, input, output. They all have the same layout. So we're going to use the input, input, output here. Now, the purpose of this video is to test out what voltages we need. We know that we need, the output's going to be high, and we need a high input at both of the inputs for the output to go low. That's what makes it a NAND gate. The output is high unless both inputs, so this input and that input are high. Then the output will be the opposite. That's why it's NAND instead of AND. It will be low when both inputs are high. Otherwise, it will be high. So in any case, let's get to wiring this. So, we're just going to set the first input so that it is always high by plugging this jumper into, or this resistor I mean, into the positive rail. We don't have to use the resistor, but this makes short circuits a little less likely. So we have some resistance from here to the positive rail. So if I accidentally connect like these two points together, there's still resistance going to the positive rail. But otherwise it doesn't matter. The pin doesn't let any current through, just a very small trickle, an insignificant amount. But uh, we'll still have 5 volts because there's so much more resistance, impedance within the integrated circuit. So that input's high. Now, we're going to adjust the voltage, the signal, to the other input with the trim pot. We'll come to that later. Right now, we'll wire the load. So, I have this jumper here. We're going to wire the load. I'm going to put the, or the output, I mean, right there, which is our load. So we're connecting to the output of the NAND gate there, and we're one spot away from this jumper. And we want the LED to light up when the output is high. And so they only pass current and light up when you have the right polarity of enough voltage across them. And then the resistor here, one kilo ohm, this is also one kilo ohm, one kilo ohm resistor will set the current based on basically five volts coming out of the output and the about two volt drop of the LED. So in any case, we'll put that there. So now we are pretty much done wiring. We're just going to wire the other input. So if I turn the power on now, we don't have both input high. One of the inputs is high and also we have a pin floating so that's not ideal you can see that that causes problems but we're going to plug the uh, trim pot here where we can adjust the voltage let's go up to the positive power supply voltage there we go and uh, we'll plug that into the other input so we're between that resistor there and that resistor there and now you can see the output went low that's how the NAND gate works so what we're interested in is what actual voltages do we need so ideally we would get about halfway and then the LED would suddenly turn on so we're lowering the voltage and now you can see that we actually get a fade in of the LED so there's no Schmidt trigger effect there's no certain point where it turns on or off and then like a little safety margin to keep it from bouncing instead it kind of fades on and it gets you know pretty bright pretty quickly though so there's like only a small range here where it kind of fades so that's nice so it's pretty much as long as you're close to you know even somewhat close to the positive rail you'll have a full positive signal and if you're not even terribly close to the negative rail again you'll have a low signal so uh, so that's pretty nice but we can use the multimeter to actually measure that to get a better idea so I think this is just kind of a fun fun uh, little project to do. It's not crucial to understanding how this component works or anything, but 
we do want when the LED is on a full 5 volts at the output and this, this is probably close enough actually so yeah we are practically all the way to the positive signal so we're getting to the positive no the negative rail so negative rail down there this will be the most voltage we ever get out of the output so we have a little drop because of the resistor in the LED but it's pretty much spot on 5 volts if I turn this almost halfway there you can see it's the same voltage so now let's check the voltage there and it's one volt so let's turn this until we start noticing that the LED starts fading there we go seems about that point right there let's see the voltage of the output right there and you can tell that uh, measuring it changes things but there we go it's about three volts at the output that's why it's a little dimmer so we're somewhat close to 2.5 volts let's go a little bit lower and see if it does better there we go there's the full voltage so so this is considered low off whatever you want to call it at 1.8 volts and now let's turn it to where the LED is fully off and then we know that's the voltage we will need let's check this and uh, you can see the little the LED came on a little bit but uh, 2.5 volts right there let's see if we have 0 volts at the output so not quite 0 volts and uh, maybe we don't ever get quite completely 0 volts we'll put a little more positive but no there we have it it's uh, completely 0 volts so somewhere it'll take somewhere about 3 volts it looks like before the uh, input is fully low or fully high now and it's close enough 3 volts is close enough to 5 volts to give a full uh, positive signal a high signal however you want to refer it to it to the pin and so that gives you an idea of the voltages to work with so it looks like between 1.8 volts or lower will give you a full low signal and 3 volts or higher will give you a full positive signal so if you're kinda iffy with this particular integrated circuit what exact voltages you'll need for a full high or low signal to the input that looks like that's pretty close and if you got some circuit where somewhere in between is not a problem then uh, you don't have to worry about that otherwise it's good to know that information and now you can look at the data sheet and compare what they claim versus uh, this particular test so it's good to learn how to test your own component so hopefully you found this video fun and uh, interesting and uh, you can learn a lot from just your components by testing them out and stuff like that you don't want to just depend on what you read and stuff first off it's kind of confusing it sticks in your memory a lot better if you do the actual testing and stuff and plus sometimes the information in the data sheets are confusing so you don't want to just wire something based completely on what you've seen on the data sheet get a feel for the actual effects that are going to be applied to your circuit so in any case thanks for watching I will see you in the next video